Hello. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how to factor what are usually called special forms. And it's sort of noteworthy because these are forms that, technically speaking, you have the tools to factor already, but they come up so often that it's sort of easy to sort of get used to or memorize or understand whatever level we're looking at here um, to the sort of quick ways of factoring these things so that when you see them out, you know, whenever you're doing a problem or doing something, you can sort of immediately factor it without putting any thought into it because of these sort of very specific formats that we're going to look at. Okay. All right. So first one is the difference of squares. <laughs> so that's in quotes for a reason. We'll get there in a moment. Not at all ominous or foreshadowing. <laughs> so the idea here is that we have some sort of term squared minus term squared. And we can quickly factor this by having sort of the difference of those two base terms and the sum of those two base terms. So I'll do an example in just a second. But I want to point out that it's really important that this is a difference of squares. Because if you had a sum, this does not work at all. In fact, there's no sort of real number version of a sum of squares formula. It doesn't exist. We can do that with complex numbers, but that's not a thing that we're sort of expecting in this class at this point. So sort of dot, dot, dot on that part. We're not going to worry about that. But it definitely doesn't exist in the real sort of number spectrum. So it's really important, right, that we have a difference, right, a minus sign here. All right, so example. Let's look at something like 4x squared minus 9. Now, the thing to sort of look at and sort of immediately notice that this might be a difference of squares situation, is that I have two terms, right? So I have the 4x squared and the 9. I have a difference, a minus sign between them. And only one of these things is an x. And particularly, it's x to an even power, right? So x squared, but I don't have like an x term. I don't have like an x cubed term, right? Just one x, and it's an even power. Now, I can rewrite this in the form of, right, something times x quantity squared minus something squared. So in this case, you can sort of do this by taking a square root or just sort of thinking about what, you know, squared gets me 9 or what squared gets me 4x squared. Here I'm going to have 2x as that first bit, so 2x squared minus 3 squared. So here the a is effectively 2, the b is effectively 3, and then I can sort of immediately use that difference of squares formula. So I get the, the base terms, right, the 2x and the 3, I'm going to take their difference and their sum, multiply these two things together, life is good. Okay. All right. So let's look at another example, not at all remembering the foreshadowing from earlier. <laughs> so what if we had instead 4x to the fourth minus 9? Now, on the one hand, this is basically exactly the same, right? All I did was increase the power by 2. So again, the thing that sort of makes the light go off, right, light bulb, think about this, is that I have a difference, two terms, and a power, one of them, like only one of them has an x, and it has an even power, right? So again, I'm going to write this as something squared minus something squared. So in this case, now 2x squared squared and 3 squared. That gives me my a and b for that formula, right? So I can take the, the difference of those two things and the sum of those two things. That gets me here. So far, so good, right? Everything's worked the same way. But if my goal is to fully factor, I might notice that as mentioned earlier, I have here a difference of two things where only one of them has an x and that x is an even power. Notice that I never said anything about being a perfect square anywhere along here, right? And that's, that's, this is where the quotes come in, the air quotes, because I can look at this 2x squared minus 3 as a difference of squares, <laughs> where those things are not perfect squares. The only thing I really need to be a perfect square for this to make sense is the x term. And the x term itself, just the x, not the coefficient, that thing is a perfect square. It's x squared, right? So I still have to write then this thing as something squared minus something squared. And there's not really a nice number for that. So I'm going to do the thing that you would sort of expect to do, which is I'm going to square root it, right? So I write this as the square root of 2 times x quantity squared and the square root of 3 quantity squared, right? Because if I square the square root, they undo each other, I get just 3. If I distribute the square, I'm going to get an x squared and square root of 2 squared, which is 2. That is indeed what I get up here. 
And this gives me, again, the sort of A and B for that formula where I can do the difference of those things times the sum of those things, which gets me here, okay? So this is what we mean when we talk about difference of squares, right? So it's actually often the case that the numbers are not themselves perfect squares. And that's sort of the point is that we don't need them to be perfect squares because we have those square roots we can use. The thing we really care about is that even power of x being sort of attached to one term and only one term, right? All right, cool. So that's our first sort of special form is this difference of squares. Alongside this, we can use a difference of cubes. Now, we say cubes in the same way that we said squares, right? So again, often the actual numbers don't have to be cubes. They could be something that we have to take the cube root of and just keep track of, and that could be annoying. But I'll also mention here that I could put difference in quotes too. <laughs> in fact, I'm going to show an example of what I mean by that. And it's sort of really unique to cubes, or more accurately to odd powers that lets me do this. So let's look at an example. What if I want to do 8x cubed plus 27? So again, I want a difference of cubes, right? And I'm looking at a thing, there's not a difference to be seen, right? This is not a difference problem. But I could rewrite plus as being a minus minus, right? So I could think of this as 8x cubed minus minus 27. And it turns out that that's sort of the point. That's sort of the goal here is because cubing something preserves the negative. So if I look at what happens when I rewrite it that way, I can then rewrite those individual terms, right? So 8x cubed, I can make this a 2x cubed, right? So the 2 cubed gives me 8. The x cubed gets me x cubed. Shocking, I know. Then I have a minus, and then I have negative 3 cubed. But if I cube negative 3, I'm going to get negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, times a negative, another, another negative 3, is negative 27, right? And then a minus minus gives me back to the plus. So the point here is that the difference of cubes actually works the same whether it is a difference or a sum. I mention this because a lot of the times people like in grade school and stuff, uh, they'll teach the difference of cubes and the sum of cubes. And there are two different formulas and then students mix up which one is which and things go sort of wrong and they do like half of one formula and half of the other and, and they don't get the thing that they need. But it turns out that is, those two formulas are one formula too many. They, it's all just the difference of cubes in disguise, okay? So you can always use difference of cubes as long as you sort of remember this minus minus trick and then keep track of what's happening. So let's see what happens when we then apply our formula, right? So we want to do this ax minus b, so that's the, that's the base term, right? The 2x minus minus 3, but a minus minus 3 is eventually going to give us a plus, right? So if you're thinking... If you're one of those people that's done sum of cubes, you can sort of see it come out at the end. Then I want ax quantity squared. So I want 2x quantity, right? Both of these things squared, not just the x. Again, common mistake. Then I want plus their product. So plus 2x times negative 3x. And then I want plus the last thing, negative 3 squared. Okay, so this is just applying the formula, plugging in the a's and the b's and the x's where they go. And then I can clean this up. So in the first part, I have 2x minus minus 3. That gets 2x plus 3. Second part is 2x quantity squared, but anything squared is always positive. That's why if you think, like, again, if you're one of these sum of cubes people, you might remember the first and last terms are always positive, but that's because you're squaring it in either way, right? And squaring it forces it to be positive. And the middle piece, the negative comes out, and so I end up with a negative 6x, which gets me, again, if you're the... Some of cubes, people, if you're looking at this, that's the uh, opposite, right? I notice I have the, the positive and the negative. But all of that, again, I want to stress, is sort of just taken care of by the formula and keeping track of the negatives in the original piece. That's why I highly suggest that uh, you just use one, one of the two formulas because they are the same formula. You don't need two different ones. And that's less stuff to memorize. All right. So there's our example. So what do we do? Well... We went through these sort of special forms that show up. One of them was this difference of cubes, which again is the sort of same as the sum of cubes. So I'm not sort of going over that because they are the exact same formula. You just have to make sure you keep track of the negatives, which we did an example of one that started as a plus to show how you can make it a negative. 
and we did the difference of squares, but in this case, it really was important that it was a difference, right? So we, there is no sum of squares in the real number line uh, sort of realm. And so it really does have to be a minus, uh, which is usually one of the reasons why I suggest doing the difference for both of them, because then you can sort of remember it that way as opposed to doing a sum for one of them and thinking there's a sum for the other, not a good call. And last but not least, I sort of emphasize this idea that like we say difference of squares, right? Or difference of cubes, because in reality, a lot of the times the numbers themselves aren't perfect squares or perfect cubes. And we have to sort of make it that way, sort of artificially by injecting one of these radicals, right? Taking the square root of the, of the actual number, the actual coefficient or the cube root, depending on which formula you're using, okay? So that is that.